Yeah, so in this recording, I would like to shed, to shed some light on the MS Lattice software that has been recently published. Uh, I would like to show the capabilities of this software really fast. Um, what, what we have in this software are four main tabs. I will be talking about the first two. Uh, the third is just an STL viewer, so you can load your STL to look at it. The implicit function, I have a complete video uh, to talk about it. The functional grading, and there are two ways for, for doing functional grading, the relative density grading and the cell size grading, I will come to them. And of course, the uniform lattices. So what this software is capable of doing, uh, you can choose from a list of um, minimal surfaces um, and you can do uh, create your own sample for mechanical testing or for uh, um, FE analysis, CFD, whatever is that uh, you wanna use it for. <clears throat> you decide on the sample dimensions, for example, if you want a sample of four, by four by four millimeter where the unit cell is uh, two millimeters. So you will get uh, at the end of the day, a structure of two by two by two. So it will be similar to this one, but here we will be plotting the primitive lattice. And this will be at 30% relative density. So you're choosing the relative density. Here, uh, the mesh density or the resolution is per unit cell. So if it works for one unit cell, it will work for three or four or 10 unit cells. What I, mean, what I mean by if it works, so if you have very less number of points or low number of points, you will get a very rough mesh uh, like this one. And if you, yeah, if you scale this up, you will have the same, uh, the same roughness all over. However, if you uh, use um, enough number of points, uh, 20 we tried before, I think, yeah, but if you go higher, so 40, then you get a much uh, nicer surface. Uh, this, of course, applies. So when you have, now if, if you try to plot four by four by four with 40, it will take a bit more time because it will translate this high resolution to the all uh, unit cells. So four by four by four is 64. There will be 64 unit cells here with the same, um, let's say surface, um, um, smoothness, so it will it will take some time. So be careful with using this mesh density points. I would always stick to 20 or 30. This works for most lattices. Um, so here, as as you can see, it's, it's taking a, a little bit of time. But at the end of the day, you get a very smooth uh, surface. The same if we use 20, it will not take that long. It will be uh, it will take considerably less time. Uh, so this is uh, something to keep in mind, as you can see here. Then if you wanna save this function, you just go ahead and save it. Uh, sorry, the, um, the structure, just give it a name and it will be now on your um, ready to print files. Now, one thing I want to show also is the fact that uh, you can do not only sheet networks, but solid networks. And this is, if we try to look at the gyrode, for example, here is a two by two by two with 30% relative density. You can increase the relative density. Uh, so let's, let's make one unit cell. I think it's better. You get also, so yeah, so this is uh, the uh, function. You can see the surface again here. You can always um, increase the, the surface triangles or mesh. So if I make this 10, you will see much less triangles. Uh, yeah, but the surface will be rough. Again, um, if we want to plot the, instead of the lattice itself, we want to plot the isosurface, then this is also possible. Uh, here, for example, I show the case of the, of the uh, gyrode. So this is the, the surface, it's not thickened. And you can play with this surface if you uh, change the relative density, you will see that it will change uh, uh, with it, yeah. Great, so this is, this is uh, the uniform and then of course if you want to do um, a cylindrical sample then you can also 
um, do that by specifying the sample radius and height. If you see this structure to be a bit rough, that's because of the mesh density. You uh, smoothen that uh, surface and you get much better representation, uh, so on and so forth. Of course, you can change the, the unit cell uh, type. So in some application, um, it might require a spherical sample. Uh, spherical samples are, are also available, so you can do spherical samples. Yeah, I saw a couple of papers uh, discussing that. Again, you can uh, clean up the surface um, by increasing the number of points. You can make it more smooth, uh, as, as you can see here. Of course, you can change the, the cell type. I think I'm sticking to these two. The IWP is, is, is a very nice, uh, beautiful structure also. Uh, yeah, it is. Okay, so now we move on from the uniform to the functional TPMS grading. The first uh, example is the relative density grading. Again, here you specify the starting relative density, the end relative density, the sample dimensions, and then you plot. So if we want to take a look at the diamond, um, what we have here, uh, we can see how the density changes in the Z direction. Of course, it's always in the Z direction. If you want to change it in a different direction, you have the implicit function window. You can play with the structure as you want. There is a separate video for that. Uh, but going back to this, you can always do the solid networks. It's always simple and straightforward to, uh, to grade your structure, as you can see. So here, when we grade the relative density, it means that the mass or the density is increasing or decreasing in one direction. You can do it for cupoid or cylindrical samples also. So again, this is a very rough uh, gyro because of the mesh point densities. But you can also do cell size grading. And cell size grading is when you grade the size of the unit cell in the Z direction. And this is nice. Why? Because you can do that at a fixed relative density. So for example, if you want to vary the surface area in a certain direction, then you want to go with a cell size grading. So here, for example, uh, the sample length, you input sample length, sample height, initial cell size, final cell size. So if you want to change these and plot you will get to see uh, how this uh, 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 sample, yeah, so these are the cell sizes. So the size goes from three uh, in the bottom uh, uh, to uh, two in the top, but that can be, uh, yeah, can be done on much bigger samples so we can actually view, uh, view it very well. So yeah, there we go. We can change always the height as we please. Uh, if we make this, uh, say, one uh, final cell size, we can see it smoothens as we go up. Careful here that you might need to increase the number of mesh points because um, it, the surface becomes very, very uh, high. The surface area becomes very high, and you will need a lot of points to capture that. So here, uh, yeah, there we go. This is very nice. Uh, I think there are no many studies discussing cell size grading. So this is a very nice opportunity uh, for exploring these, uh, the properties of this uh, structure. I always like the primitive, the gyro, the diamond, the IWP looks very nice here also. Um, and again, this cell size grading can be done for cupoid samples and cylindrical samples. Uh, as I mentioned, for the implicit function, there will be a separate um, video to describe the capabilities because that tab is what I consider your playground. So in this tab, you can do a lot more than just um, picking from the menu. So here you can do much more and I will make a separate video for that. Thank you for um, sticking with me. And uh, with that, I end the uh, session.